Now hopefully you saw last week's video where I went out in the field and shot for the first time with ADOX CMS22, a very high resolution, uh, like a microfilm really, a black and white film, which has claims of uh, super high resolution, uh, incredible sharpness and detail. And I shot uh, one complete roll of this, uh, this amazing film. And uh, last week I showed you some, uh, some preliminary scans of the film made with this uh, Panasonic G9, which I'm videoing uh, myself with now. But I thought I'd uh, spend a little bit of time on a separate video now, now that I've had a chance to look at the, uh, the images in more detail and make a few more scans and prints in the darkroom. And just go through some of my um, findings from this very uh, cursory and single roll shoot from last week. So here we go. Now, there were three ways in which I uh, produced the, the images, which you're going to see here. The first was with my Panasonic G9 and a 30 millimeter macro lens uh, with a light pad. I use this in the high resolution mode, which gives me a very, very a detailed image, something around about the sort of 40 megapixel range. And from past experience, it is sharper than a typical um, you know, 24 megapixel DSLR. It's very, very sharp indeed, tons of detail. However, there is a little bit more grain in there than you would see with other methods for reproduction, as I'm gonna explain now. Now, the next method was to use my very high quality, uh, very old Minolta 5400 film scanner, which is a dedicated 35 millimeter film scanner and has a resolution of 5400 dots per inch. Uh, this gives a slightly um, smaller image size than that of the Panasonic G9, but uh, to my eye, it's actually better. Now, if you look at these side by side on the screen here, you will see there is uh, potentially about the same levels of detail, but the grain is much nicer. It, it, it's played down, what grain there is that is on this film is played down, it's not enhanced, it's not over sharpened, it's very natural looking. I really do like the look of the image made with the Minolta scanner, the dedicated film scanner. But as I said in last week's video, I did want to also give you the option of seeing what a darkroom print would look like. Now, it's very difficult to show you here. These are, these are, these are glossy prints, so they are gonna reflect the light uh, quite, uh, quite badly. Um, and I will put them up on screen now. Anyway, just a little bit about the darkroom prints. I made them on uh, Ilford's resin coated gloss paper. Now this is for the reason that it is gonna show up any uh, weakness in the film, any lack of sharpness, the grain will be shown to its, uh, its best level of detail. There's nowhere to hide. It will mercilessly show up any defects with the film or lens. It's the best way of reproducing for you. The, the image on the screen in this video. Now, uh, again, if you look at the details here, it is open to interpretation. I do like the way it is being produced in the darkroom. I use a diffuser uh, enlarger in the darkroom, which means the light is it's scattered about as it's projected through the negative. It's not ultra harsh like a condenser enlarger. This is the way I like to enlarge my images. And I think it's given a very, very nice result. Uh, very, very smooth, very, very natural. Uh, you know, it's, it's not quite got the same levels as a scan, but sharpened up, as you can see here, I think it's given a, a very good account of itself. And I really do like the look of those darkroom prints. Now, I was uh, keen, obviously, to see what the uh, the film could do at a larger size. So I have made, and it's quite difficult again to show you this here, but I have made a, a very large uh, darkroom print. Now this is uh, 24, well, I'll get a bit further back. That is uh, 24 by 20 inch paper, and uh, it's about 22 inch wide image. And um, I will say that it's very impressive indeed for a 35 millimeter film. I haven't seen levels of detail and um, the low levels of grain like that before in any film. So it's uh, very impressive to be able to do that with a 35 millimeter negative. However, all is not perfect. So the next thing worth mentioning is the, the film uh, taking stage, the, the actual shooting. Now on the day, I took a couple of very good prime lenses, uh, 28 millimeter F2.8 Nikkor and a 50 millimeter F1.8 Nikkor. And I also took a very good zoom, the 80 to 200 F4.5, which is an excellent zoom for normal use. However, I have to say straight away that the prime lenses performed better, noticeably better. No matter what method I used, whether it was the Panasonic, whether it was the Minolta, whether it was a darkroom print, you could see the difference in quality between the zoom and the prime lenses. 
Now, the prime lens was used around about f8, f11, and it gave a good account of itself. But with the, uh, the few shots I took, and I wish I'd done more actually, the few shots I took with the prime lenses were sharper. Uh, the, the level of detail on the likes of this image taken with the 28 millimeter Nikkor were fantastic. Now I stopped it down and uh, it's still fantastic. It was noticeably better and crisper. So uh, I would say that if I was shooting this film again, when I shoot this film again, I will likely shoot it just with my prime lenses. I won't worry much about diffraction, however. I will concentrate on getting everything in depth of field wise. Um, I may use a couple of later zooms I've got, much more modern zooms, uh, you know, much better coatings, better corrected, but I won't be using old manual focus Nikkor zooms with this film again. Now it's important to, to state here that this film does demand a, a level of rigor when it comes to developing, which isn't the same as I would normally do with the likes of HP5 Plus or XP2. It's not something you can be slapdash about. You can't just chuck it in the can and slosh the chemicals about and expect good results. You do need to be a little bit more careful. Um, you do need to uh, take a, you know, the appropriate care in mixing the chemicals with distilled water. Uh, the agitation is very specific. At, um, you know, the first minute is continuous, then it's one inversion, very slow inversion, every minute for 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, you need to stop it uh, with an acid stop bath and you also need to use fresh fixer and only for about 45 seconds or so. Uh, over fixing will bleach the image out. You also need to uh, you obviously uh, take this uh, very, very careful in terms of handling the film once it's been, um, once it's been developed. Uh, be careful of getting scratches on it. I've got a few scratches on my film and I'd never even touched it when I let it drip dry. So uh, yes, obviously uh, it's potentially maybe a little bit more soft. I don't know yet. It's just something I'll, I'll, I'll point out that uh, you do need to take this seriously when you're developing it. Um, every stage with the terms of shooting and developing this film makes a big impact on it, far more than any other film I've worked with before. Now, as I mentioned briefly uh, earlier, the lack of uh, detail in some of my images is because I was going for a the best optimum performance in terms of not having diffraction in the images. Now that meant I shot the 50 millimeter at F4. Now I've never shot this at F4, this lens for landscapes before. And I did notice that the outer edges of the frame aren't as good as the center. Um, they just hadn't come in enough. You know, it's, it's a 35, 40 year old lens and uh, it really would be beneficial to stop it down to F5.6 or F8. So the corners come in better. Um, it's just a characteristic of older lenses. A lot of modern lenses will, will be uh, very good performers in, in the corners at bigger apertures, but it's just not the case I found with this lens. It has been shown up somewhat, um, whereas when I did stop down, the diffraction really didn't affect the image much, but the depth of field and the corner performance was much better. So I will be prepared to stop the lenses down greater in future. Um, yeah, may sacrifice a little bit of center sharpness, but overall the images are gonna be much better. Now I did mention that I was uh, punished for sloppy technique in last week's trip on the video. And I think I have two problems. I'm not quite sure where they lie yet uh, to be certain. I'll have to shoot more film. But the first is I have got a bit of flare coming into the some of the images. There was strong side lighting. Um, you can see it on the video. You can actually see flare on the GoPro, obviously. It's very wide. But I wasn't using lens hoods. I should have used lens hoods. It's uh, sort of schoolboy error. Uh, should have shaded it with my sit mat or something else. Uh, so I have got some flare coming into images. Um, and I know that because the, the pattern on the negatives is the same on a number of frames, so it's not developing marks. However, I do have, uh, I think also some development issues. I've got a little bit of unevenness in the sky, which is only really visible on the large prints, the very large prints, but there's something going on in there. It may be flare, it may be the chemicals. I'm not quite sure yet. And as I uh, alluded to, I have some scratches in there as well. Nothing really bad, but um, I was very, very careful handling the film. So again, it can be quite touchy. Uh, I do get scratches occasionally on normal film, but uh, they're quite um, small and the distribution indicates that it's, it's, it's certainly not me touching the film because I never touched it. Um, but there's something going on there, which means I should um, shoot this film again alongside a different film so I can do a proper side-by-side -side comparison to rule out development versus lens defects stroke flare. 
So that brings me to uh, what you'll probably all be wanting me to get to, which is uh, the grain and resolution of this film. Is this film uh, evident they claim it to be? Oh, and I, uh, the, the simple answer is I don't know yet, because you cannot tell by shooting a roll of film exactly how good or bad it is. And if anyone tells you otherwise and they, they review a film uh, and they put a couple of rolls through and then pronounce uh, a verdict on it, well, take the notice. You need to shoot a film uh, more times than that in, in different situations and in comparison against other films. Um, I specifically didn't take another film on this day because I wanted to concentrate on one camera, one film. But the next time out, I will compare it to a known film, maybe something like Delta 100 um, alongside it. And that will rule out any defects with my cameras or my lenses or my settings or my development so I'll get a better comparison. Um, it is also uh, a case that this was very very bright lighting and very very harsh on the day and uh, it would have taxed many systems, many film uh, combinations and camera combinations. But I will say that from my limited experience so far it is the finest grain film I have shot with. Uh, it does have incredible sharpness um, quite pleased as well that it, it does appear to have good uh, spectral sensitivity. Um, I was dreading sort of empty mid-tones and that sort of harsh sudden whitewash look that microfilms used to give years ago. Uh, this isn't the case with this one. It does appear to have a, a good balance of tones when developed in the Editech for developer carefully. Um, it does appear to, to give a good reproduction. So I'm not worried about that from a sort of uh, pictorial um, representation side of things. I am quite pleased that it, uh, it will match other films and be a usable landscape film for me. Now, as I've said, the grain, it has been said that the grain is non-existent. Um, I wouldn't say it's non-existent. I would say it's incredibly difficult to see. It's very difficult to see in the dark room when you're trying to enlarge um, and use your focus finder to actually see the grain to get the, um, the head at the right height. Um, but you can see a tiny bit. Now on the, the biggest enlargement, the 20 by 24, there is a sort of slight texture in the sky. It's difficult to describe. There is something there. It's not the obvious grain. It is very, very smooth indeed. So it's something which I think it's fair to say it's incredibly fine grain. There is a grain in there. You won't notice it unless you press your nose up against it at a huge enlargement. It has massive capabilities for large prints. But uh, yeah, there, is, there are drawbacks to that, uh, that level of detail as I explain now. So one of the difficulties with uh, a film like this in 35 millimeter when you are making very large prints is that it will mercilessly show up any, any sloppiness in your technique as I've already explained. Uh, the degree of enlargement means that you know specs on the film will be huge, they will create huge defects. But something else which is often not mentioned is the fact that when you have a film which is super smooth with very little grain, it's very difficult to mask defects. Now if you're shooting a film like Ilford's Delta 3200, and you have uh, some defects, uh, marks or flecks in the sky or bits of dust. They're very easy to hide in the grain. You can spot them out quite easily. But something like this with its super smooth skies, uh, any defect will show up straight away. And it's, I wouldn't say it's impossible to spot it out, but it's very, very difficult because any, any sort of um, brushwork or, or any, any sort of knifing work will show up very, very quickly. So. It is a very tricky film to work with. If you're working with something like medium format or large format, your degree of enlargement is considerably less. So you will uh, have less issues with grain, with scratches, etc. Uh, they're much easier to work with. I mean, the best analogy I can give is that this ADOX CMS20 is like a sort of uh, a, a turbocharged 500cc engine. Medium format is like a, a, a two litre engine and large formats like a, a big V8. Um, yes, you can get a lot of power out of the small engine, but you're really pushing it. Everything has to be perfect and it is fragile. Whereas the, the bigger the format, it, it becomes a lot easier to work with. You can be a bit more laid back. You can be a bit more casual. Things tend to sort themselves out and you can hide defects. You can get away with all sorts. So just worth bearing in mind, it, it's incredible, but it's not uh, the sort of silver bullet, which some people may claim that it is. So in summary, I need to shoot more of this film. I do not know enough about it yet. It has great potential. Uh, I can think of certain situations where I would want to use this film, uh, probably not where I've got open clear skies because as I said, they are, they are cruel in showing up any defects. But the initial shot of the, uh, the branches, the backlit branches, absolutely perfect. Tons of detail in there. 
it is a very contrasty film. I don't think I've said that yet, but it's very contrasty. I was printing down at grade zero and grade one in the dark room, um, which is probably a little bit harder than I would, a bit softer uh, than I would normally have to work with. I'd normally expect to work with a grade three for images like these. So I wouldn't use it for everything. I would have to think of some specific use cases, um, maybe on duller days, lower contrast days, um, where there aren't the same blank skies potentially. Definitely good for sort of detail work, macro work, um, yeah, close-ups in forests, etc. superb. But I will have to go out with it again. That's not gonna happen for a few weeks probably. I need to pick the right conditions, but uh, yeah, so there you go, a bit of a ramble. Sorry about the uh, the time it took me to get round all that lot, but uh, it is a film definitely worth considering. I will, as I say, try it again. I will, um, I will say that uh, for the cost of it, it's very good value and uh, it's something which could rival a larger format so you know if you, you've only got 35 millimeter uh, give it a go you will be getting quality like medium format or even slightly larger the grain is as good as you know a typical uh, slow medium format film it, it's that good but uh, handling a little bit tricky shooting a little bit tricky got to use your best gear got to handle everything uh, with precision and care um, but yeah give it a go Give it a go and see what you think of it uh, I, I can definitely recommend you having a try with it so anyway thanks for putting up with me and um i hopefully see you soon on another trip probably into the mountains but there we go thanks a lot see you again soon